Good morning. It's Thursday here in Waller County, Texas. I know it's Thursday because I checked my computer. And then just to be sure, I looked at my phone. Anybody else having trouble keeping track of what day of the week it is? Good grief. Okay, I'm excited to share this with you because I invented it last night. <laughs> and I tried one and it worked perfectly. So this all came about. This is a keto bread, which I'm not following keto. I'm not don't have a gluten allergy, but I have friends that do both. So I try to make treats for them once in a while too. So this is a recipe I've been making here recently, but I make a full recipe in a loaf pan. And it's kind of a brioche, meaning uh, an eggy bread. And um, this version uses almond flour instead of wheat flour. And um, I was talking to someone about our uh, breakfast sandwich maker, Pampered Chef's breakfast sandwich maker, and um, the ceramic egg cooker. And these are both great products and do di slightly different things. The ceramic egg cooker is, has no insert. It makes a great little quick omelet kind of thing. And uh, there it Pampered Chef has a recipe for like a blueberry lemon muffin that you can make in the microwave in this, which got me to thinking that maybe I could cut down my keto bread recipe and make it. And then I was thinking, well, wait, because if someone is trying to avoid carbs and trying to avoid wheat, the typical thing that you make with the breakfast sandwich maker use like my favorite sandwich with it is like a fake egg McMuffin. So I thought, okay, what if I could make it in here and get a size that I could then use to make a breakfast sandwich. So with that in mind, I adapted my keto bread recipe and to a size that will fit in here and it could even have a little bit more but it was perfect because I don't use it a lot it only makes probably gonna probably get four slices out of this recipe now the breakfast sandwich maker typically this is what it comes with the base which you can see is wider than the ceramic egg cooker it has a deep insert that when you're making the breakfast sandwich you put your eggs in the bottom you put Canadian bacon or a pre-cooked sausage patty or something like that, something pre-cooked in here, and you put the lid on, put it in the microwave and cook it. And then after the first session, you add your English muffin to the shallow insert, put it on top of the deep one, all stays in there, put the lid on, put it back in the microwave. And, and when it, that session is done, you've got your entire breakfast sandwich. Okay, so back to my keto bread. I got out my calculator and I cut my loaf recipe down so that I could do it in here. And I made the test one last night and it was fantastic. So you put the inserts in the little way. You don't need those. All you need is the bottom. So we're going to start with two tablespoons of butter. And I am a real butter person. So real butter and one and a half tablespoons of olive oil. This is our adjust, Pampered Chef's adjustable uh, measuring spoons. I love these, and yes, they work for liquids. So one tablespoon. And then a half tablespoon, which happens to be one and a half teaspoons. Remember that from home ec? because a tablespoon is three teaspoons. Okay. So put that in here and don't cover it and put this in the microwave. Start with 15 seconds and it's all, everybody's microwaves are slightly different. So give it 15 seconds uncovered. And then you can get your dry ingredients together. So I'm using, um, Blanched almond flour. I like Bob's Red Mill, but any any brand does. I have a half a cup in here, and you know it's a little moister, a little uh, different than 
wheat flour. So you do want to make sure you get all the little clumps and bumps out. And I just use a whisk to do that. So the rest of the dry ingredients will add um, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. Adjust your little spoon or use a one quarter teaspoon. Baking powder. An eighth teaspoon of xanthan gum. And you need to use this when you're using keto recipes. Um, it helps with the consistency and the texture. You can Google that and learn what it's all about. So an eighth teaspoon of xanthan gum. <clears throat> and an eighth teaspoon of sea salt. And just whisk all your dry ingredients so that they're it's all well blended. You just use a bowl and a whisk, get all the lumps and bumps out and make sure it's all evenly distributed in there. Okay, let's check our butter. I wish we had the expensive zoom over the top camera so you could see it, but it is melted. Now, if you've overdone it and it's like boiling and bubbling, let it cool just a little bit before you add your eggs because you don't want your eggs to start cooking the minute they hit hot butter. Okay. And <clears throat> do use um, some kind of protection for your hands, little mini uh, hot pads or towel or something. Okay. So my butter is melted, but it's really not very hot. So I'm going to add my eggs and I've got two eggs. And let me make a plug for your local farmers. Please support your local farmers and buy, I buy raw milk and eggs from the same dairy farm. So I have two probably would be considered large eggs and I'm going to, if you have a small whisk, you can use a whisk. My grandmother taught me to scramble eggs with a fork. So I've always done it this way. So scramble it up and you'll see that incorporated with the butter and olive oil, it gets kind of a creamy, just a really pleasant looking mix. And do it really well. Oh, and let me just make a little mention here about eggs and when you're going to be cooking with eggs. A lot of times you'll see in a recipe, it recommends you use your eggs at room temperature. And there's a good reason for that. And if you're just making eggs like scrambled eggs or things like that, it doesn't really matter. But if you're going to be blending in flours, the egg is less viscous if you use it at room temperature. In other words, it's not as gooey and it incorporates much better at room temperature than it does when it's cold. It's not the end of the world. If they're cold, it's okay. All right. So once we have the eggs all smooshed together like that, and we've got the dry ingredients already combined, we're going to add the dry ingredients into the egg a little at a time. And you can do all this right in here. You don't need to get a mixer out. You just kind of keep, make sure you get all the lumps and bumps out. If you came in late, I'm going to um, post the recipe with this, but this is almond flour. So this is going to be keto friendly, gluten free recipe for bread made in the microwave. Now this recipe, when I make the full recipe in a loaf, it bakes for about 45 minutes. We're going to have this done in less than two minutes. I know it's going to be, you can't probably really see it, but it's turning into a nice, thick, slightly gooey batter. Mm. 
Now remember, there's butter and olive oil in here, so I'm really not worried about it sticking. It's going to work out just fine. Make sure you get all the dry pieces stick, uh, off the bottom and off the sides, and it's all really well incorporated. And the longer you keep mixing it, it's going to get a little bit thicker, a little smoother, and that almond flour will uh, incorporate very well into the egg mixture. Okay. Now we're going to leave it uncovered and I'm going to put it in the microwave for 90 seconds and everybody's microwaves are different. So if it doesn't quite work out the first time for you, you can adjust uh, later. Okay. I have been baking and cooking for a very long time, and it never, ever occurred to me to make breads or cakes in the microwave. But since I've been a Pamper Chef consultant and reading some of their recipes, I've discovered that you really can do things in the microwave I never would have tried. And it's, it's very quick. Uh, there's another recipe that I've posted recently, um, a banana poke cake. It's made in the Rock Crock Dutch oven, and so it makes a humongous batch. And I made it, and unfortunately, we all figured out how to eat it before it went bad. But it, it's a white cake mix. You can either use a box, or I have recipes for um, like a from scratch pretend box. And um, it, it makes this giant um, Dutch oven cake. And then you poke, probably everybody's heard of or made poke cakes. And there is a uh, banana, um, trying to think what else was in it, um, caramel sauce. Oh, it was so good. And you poke it and put that warm sauce in there. And oh my God, I discovered that you can make cake in the microwave. Who thought? So then when I got to thinking about this bread, and the fact that like in our um, ceramic egg cooker, you can make muffins or you can make, you know, those um, cup size brownies or cakes or cookies in this as well. That's what made me think to try to do this bread in the uh, breakfast sandwich maker. Okay, so it has been in the microwave for 90 seconds. Let's check it. So I'm going to show you how this looks right now, and I'm going to check it with a toothpick to see if it's done in the center, and it is. If it were not, you would continue at 15 second intervals until it is done. So now we need to turn it out. And um, if you have like one of the old pamper, they still make these. This is mine is 20 some years old, little thin paring knife. You can just loosen the edges if you need to. I'm actually going to use the towel for this because uh, I just want to don't non drop it. And I think we can probably just do it this way. And just let it cool on the rack. Sorry, we have a complaining bull terrier over there. Now, here's the one I made last night. And you can see how nice and tight the crumb is. And there you have a piece of bread, keto bread that has almond flour instead of wheat flour, so it's gluten-free as well. You can toast it, or you can use it when you, if you use your breakfast sandwich maker and you're gonna put your eggs in there, remember, your Canadian bacon or whatever meat you're using in there. And then, whoops, your keto bread slice can go on the top or two if you're gonna do it. And you cook it and you make it, and there's your gluten-free, keto-friendly,
breakfast sandwich. So this bread is, um, it is very much like a brioche, very eggy. And um, even people who are not fans of keto or gluten-free products will like this bread. Trust me, it'd be great toasted, use it for anything. And look, in less than five minutes, we have bread, which would have taken you know, 45 minutes to bake in a loaf form. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope you try it. I will post the recipe after the video and see you guys. Okay, end, end, end.